Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video and today's video is gonna be on how to play Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Now this game has been out for a week or so and I was waiting to make this video because the emulator was really unstable, it crashed all the time, it had like 5 FPS, so I waited for this tutorial, so it's at least kind of playable it will be more playable the older this video gets basically so yeah right now i'm in yuzu early access 1181 there could be a newer version in the link down below if the link doesn't work join my discord server but yeah if you haven't set up any game and you haven't seen my other guides keep watching now as you can see i have all my games here already but behind my camera, there's the green plus button to add a new game directory. If you have a fresh Yuzu, it will show up a big folder with a plus in it and it will say the same text, like double click to add. So you double click it and then you find the folder that your games are in, not the game itself, just the folder where it's in. Then you click select folder, which I already did. So I'm clicking out of this and then it will show up here. But at the start, the first time you open Yuzu, it says it's missing components. So the next thing we're going to do is go to file and then open Yuzu folder. So then you end up here. You might have less folders, which is fine. And you check for the keys folder. If there's no keys folder, make one. Now double click that and paste the prod keys file in there, which is in the link down below. Don't mind these these will get auto generated which is fine so yeah after adding the prod keys to the keys file in app data roaming yuzu and then keys right you click out of this you close yuzu you open it again and then the game will show up in this list if it doesn't right click the folder in yuzu and make sure you have scan subfolders on you could restart yuzu again if it doesn't show up after that and then it should work if it still doesn't work you probably don't have the right game file you uh, you downloaded an update file or something but the game file should be down below as well now after you've done this we're going to the emulation tab and click configure to make this easier just go to the bottom left corner of yuzu and like make sure these are all checked if not you can check multi-core right here. Just keep the first free on basically. Just copy mine. Now for the UI to be dark, cause yours might be white. You go to the UI tab in general. And then here the theme for me is dark colorful. Now you can change the icon sizes, etc., which I'm not gonna do. And in system for the people who wanna skip time and let's say Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can choose custom RTC. You can change the time, uh, which I'm not gonna do. For the rest, you can just leave this as it is. Make sure your sound output is on stereo for the best audio. You can set up multiple profiles if you're not the only one using Yuzu and you both wanna have a save file. It's pretty easy, I don't have to explain it. Boxcat, you don't have to worry about this one. And this one isn't important as well. Now for CPU, keep this to accurate. You don't need to do anything with this. Now graphics though, make sure to choose OpenGL, especially if you have NVIDIA as your graphics card. Uh, if you have AMD, you might want to choose Vulkan and then choose the AMD device. You can try AMD on NVIDIA as well, but OpenGL works the best in my opinion and from what I've seen. Now on here, make sure to use disk shader cache and use asynchronous GPU emulation as well as use NVDEC emulation to get the best performance. Also asynchronous GPU emulation is necessary for multi-core to work, which boosts performance by at least three times. So yeah, make sure those two are on which you can also see here next to each other in the bottom left. All right, so you can use VSync, you don't have to. Uh, I put this on normal, which you should too. And isotropic filtering, I put it on 16 times, but you can leave it on default. Also make sure to use fast GPU time. You can try to use both assembly shaders and asynchronous shader building. If it crashes, try disabling them and check if it doesn't crash anymore. Now in audio, I have everything on auto. I disabled audio stretching and you can put the volume to whichever you like. Now the controls, make sure you press connect controller. A lot of people have been asking me why their controls don't work because of the old menu didn't have this, but make sure this is connected. Otherwise it won't work. 
Um, I recommend to choose handheld and for me it's an Xbox controller so it's X input. If you don't see it just click refresh if your controller is on it should show up then. You can make profiles which is fine. So to set this up you basically just click on a button and then click it on the controller. If you have a, a keyboard and mouse you can choose keyboard slash mouse here and do it for the keyboard and mouse. It's basically pretty simple. Same for all the other buttons. And you can check vibration on or off if you want your controller to vibrate. And motion if let's say you have a PS4 controller, it has motion sensors in it. You can choose that as well. I just have it on, but my controller doesn't support it, but that is fine. Now, after you've set all of this, click OK. And everything should work. You see that dock is turned off right now. So I'm going to put that on again because docked mode gives us 1080p resolution instead of 720p. Let's start the game. And as you can see, it says not tested, but I have tested it. So let's run it. I don't have shaders for it yet, but I'll try to put a link in the description if I have them. All right, a quick note to add shader cache, right click the game and view zoo. Click open transferable shader cache. If it says a shader does not exist, run the game first, then close Yuzu after playing for a few seconds, then try again. So if I have a better shader cache, put it in this folder and it should have this name. The other names are for other games. So yeah, back to the video. All right, so for a second or maybe even a minute the first time, it can show a black screen. Don't comment like, oh, it's black screen, it doesn't work. I waited. The first time I thought it didn't work as well and then it did work. So here you can choose your difficulty. After all this you can click confirm and you can change those later by the way. In this screen it shows that it's saving with that icon. You can click next. Okay first time I waited. All right so we can skip the cutscene. Skip the other cutscene. Now it will look like this for a little bit but then it will load up as you can see it's pretty pixelated as we speak and it's not the smoothest but keep in mind I'm recording as well but the gameplay itself is actually pretty good and it used to crash on that attack I don't know it really depends it crashes sometimes it doesn't crash the other other time and in this time it did crash but as you can see the game actually boots the game actually runs until some point where it crashes uh, or not previous time I tested it didn't crash there it crashed later on uh, I could have I, I finished this whole battle uh, but yeah all the links are down in the description let me know if it works for you and comment it down below so other people know it's real. I don't know if I said it, but leave a like, subscribe, join the Discord server if you need any help because in the comments I can't really help you that much. And uh, yeah, that's all. Hopefully we can get 20,000 subs at the end of 2020. And that's all for me. Peace out.